Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel for another episode of the Route Learning series, this time recorded in Train Sim World 2. Um, so for this episode, I wanted to do something that's not British, so we're traveling back over to Germany, and I'm going to be driving a journey on the Hauptstrecke rhein ruhr route, um, following the timetable, so if you go into timetable mode if you'd like to recreate this, uh, we're following the timetable of train RE11, which is the 11.33 departure from Bochum through to Duisburg. Now, I do apologise for any um, mispronunciations, as always, in areas I'm not familiar with. I did look up the pronunciations of those two place names, but I think I'm still not quite getting it right. Um, so I've set the season to autumn and the weather to cloudy, and the total journey distance for this journey is 35 kilometres, which is about 22 miles, uh, with three stops along the way to Duisburg, um, which are at Wattenscheid, Essen and Mulheim. The train that I'm driving on this journey is the BR425 electric multiple unit. Um, so the BR425 is uh, very much related to the BR426 and the only difference between the two as far as I'm aware is that the BR426 is a two coach unit whereas the BR425 is a four coach unit. Uh, though the formation of the train today is two BR425 units connected together forming an eight coach train. Uh, so the BR425 um, was built by a consortium of Bombardier, Siemens and DWA between 1999 and 2008. Um, there was a total of 249 BR425 units produced and 43 BR426 units produced. Um, the total length of each unit is 67.5 metres, which is just over 220 feet, with a total unit weight of 114 tonnes, and they have a power output of 2,350 kilowatts, or 3,150 horsepower, running on the 15 kilovolt 16.7 hertz AC overhead electrification system. Now, from what I understand, these units have a maximum speed of 160 kilometres per hour, but they're only actually allowed to travel at that speed under LZB signalling. Now I'm not quite sure why that is, so if you do know why that is then please let me know in the comments. Um, the maximum speed under PZB signalling um, is 140 kilometres per hour. So that's the speed that we're going to be limited to on this journey today as this route isn't equipped for LZB signalling and it's only got PZB installed. I've now jumped into the cab of the unit to quickly go through the startup procedure here. So the first thing you need to do is insert the master key. Um, so if I just zoom into the master key switch there and then click on it, the master key is now inserted. And now we've got to set the reversing handle to the forward position, um, which is actually the master key switch itself. So if you move that up to the V position, uh, then the train is now set um, in forward. Now I'm going to press I to turn on the instrument lights, H to turn on the headlights. In fact, I pressed H twice to get the headlights into the correct setting. Now press Control and Numpad Enter to turn on the PZB system and then Shift and Numpad Enter to turn on the CIFA system. Uh, now I'm going to set up the destination um, boards on the outside of the train. So you need to go to the computer on the left hand side of the cab and then click on the 8 there. And now that I've done that, you can see there you've got Tsug 1 and Tsug 2. So you've got Train 1 and Train 2. So that's the two units in this formation. Both currently saying Nicht Einstiegen, which uh, means do not board. Uh, so we need to set that up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on number 2 at the bottom, where you can see it says Root Eing. And now you can see you've got uh, under buttons 2 and 3, you've got, or should I say above buttons 2 and 3, you've got Tsug 1 and Tsug 2. So if I click on Tsug 1 first of all, I can now use the up arrow to set the destination display. Um, it took me a bit of research to try and work out where the actual destination for this service would be, um, but I think I've got it correct now. So we're on RE11, and I think the destination is Ham, um, which is in the Dortmund area. So if you now press E, that now sets it on uh, Unit 1. And if I now go to Tsug 2, so I press number 3 on the control pad there. And I'm going to use the up arrow again to select RE11, Ham. And, oh, one, one too far there. And now I'm going to press E again. And now the destination displays on the outside of the train are set correctly. And now I'm just going to click on 0 just to go back to the main screen on the computer there. Um, now continuing around the cab, um, in front of us there we've got the combined traction and brake controller which is very familiar um, to anyone really who watches my videos. Um, as most modern units are fitted with a combined controller, so you've got the acceleration position which is Fahren, which is as you push the handle away from you. You've got the zero position in the
the middle, which is the neutral or coast position. And then you've got bremsen for braking, so as you pull the handle towards you, uh, then the brakes get applied. Um, I will just point out that this is not notched. There is a notch for the zero or neutral position, um, but when you're accelerating or braking, this is actually a very smooth control. So you've got very precise controls of the um, braking and acceleration. Now, just in front of us here, we've got the traction controller. Um, so what you can see there, um, it's currently pointing at zero. When the train is accelerating, then it points away from zero to the right. And when the train is braking, then it points away from zero to the left. And this is uh, the gauge I'm generally going to use to um, uh, to establish how hard the brakes are applied rather than the brake gauge that I'd normally use and um, because this uh, unit uses blended brakes between electronic braking, uh, rheostatic braking should I say, and air braking. And uh, the air brakes don't actually get applied much until we're going very slowly, probably around 10 or 15 kilometers per hour or so. Um, just to the right of that, we've got the speedometer measured in kilometers per hour. Now, it looks like there's an AFB needle on the outside of that speedometer, um, but I've been trying to get the AFB to come on in this unit and so far been completely unsuccessful. Um, so I'm going to be driving manually and I'm going to be maintaining the speeds but with manual adjustments of the power controller rather than using the AFB as a cruise control system. Um, just to the right of the speedometer there, you've got the brake gauges. So the yellow needle that you can see there, um, that's the brake cylinder pressure gauge indicating how hard the brakes are applied. And the higher that yellow needle is pointing, then the harder the brakes are applied. And uh, when it's pointing at zero, then the brakes are fully released. Um, and now we do have a horn control. I can't remember if it's two-tone or not. I've just used both tones, and it's exactly the same tone uh, both ways. Um, but yeah, that was the horn control. Um, so yeah, we've now pretty much set up the unit ready for departure. So let's just take another look outside, and then we can depart out on our journey towards Duisburg. Departing away from Bochum, the starting speed limit here is 120 km per hour, which is around 75 miles per hour, and we've got around 6 km to go to our first stop at Wattenscheid. I should also mention at this point I did open the windows during the cab setup just now, um, as I forgot to uh, do it, or should I should say I opened the windows before departure just now, as I forgot to do it during the cab setup. And the other thing that I um, had to do was to get out the driver's seat and get back into it again, or else the, um, the pedal to reset the CIFA system will not work. And you can press Q as much as you like, but the game just won't recognize the input at all. Uh, so uh, certainly with this unit and the BR422, uh, you do need to get out of the uh, driver's seat and get back in to activate the CIFA reset pedal. Uh, the speed limit's just gone up to 160 kilometers per hour. Um, although, of course, as I've already mentioned, we can't go above 140 in this unit. So I'm just accelerating up towards 140 now. Now we're doing around 140. I'm just going to use a low power setting to try and maintain the speed. Just gaining a little bit of speed there, so I'll just cut the power back a bit. The gradient is now levelling out though, so I'm just going to now re-increase the power just to try and ensure that we don't break, uh, sorry, that we don't lose too much speed. So now looking out for uh, coming up on kilometre post 11, uh, the left curve just after that, we need to be braking for Wattenscheid station. just been making some minor adjustments to the power handle, just uh, watching the speedometer, just to ensure that we don't gain or lose too much speed. So we're now coming up on the left curve that I mentioned, we've passed kilometre post 11, this is the next left hand curve and I'm now going to make a brake application to bring our speed down in time for the stop, so I've gone up to 30 on the brake gauge for now. 
and uh, that should bring our speed off quite nicely. see the platform coming up just ahead it's an island platform um, so in between this track and the track to our left and here at Vattenscheid station um, I need to aim to stop shortly past the kilometer post which is in the platform and uh, just over halfway along so I'm just coming up there on kilometer post 9.6 continue just a little bit further along according to at least uh, the stop markers that DTG put in uh, when I drove this route with them turned on and we should now be stopping in just about the right place Starting away from Vattenscheid, the speed limit here is still 160 km per hour or 140 km per hour for us. And we've got just under 9 km to go to the next stop, which is Essen. reaching 140 and just cutting the power back just to ensure we don't break the speed limit and a bit like before I'll just make very minor adjustments to the throttle now uh, based upon what I can see the speedometer doing Somewhere along here, I think I might have missed it. The speed limit actually dropped to 140 kilometers per hour, um, but it's not a speed change which affects us, so it's not too important on this journey. Uh, but it's something to remember for um, journeys where you might be driving a faster train, for example. Now, what I'm looking out for now is a warning for an upcoming 100 kilometer per hour speed limit.
So this distance signal here is warning us of an upcoming 100 speed limit, which comes into force at the next main signal. And then shortly after the distance signal, we've just passed the 100 km per hour speed warning there. So I'm now putting the brakes on as we just passed the warning. Uh, just as a warning for this one, um, something that I found happened to me when driving the practice runs on this route uh, was that slowing down for this speed limit, although there is no PZB to acknowledge, um, I seemed to get a, a, a penalty brake or emergency brake application as if the system uh, thought that I hadn't acknowledged the PZB. Uh, just braked slightly too hard there, I caught the wrong key. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, um, so I actually got this emergency brake application and I think it's because I might not have been slowing down quickly enough for that 100 speed limit and maybe that's the reason it happened. Uh, so we're now coming up on Essen station and I've got the brakes on now for our stop and I'm braking a little bit harder um, because I released the brakes momentarily but then I remembered actually you don't need to release the brakes so when you're slowing for that 100 just continue to brake gently and that should bring your speed down nicely in time for Essen station. So here at Essen I want to stop according to again where DTG was telling me the correct stopping point is just along here while there's still a building on the right and just before the end of the platform roof about two coach lengths um, before the end. So just as those windows in the building turn to white, as you can see, just coming up, I think that's pretty much the correct stopping point just around here. Departing away from Essen, the speed limit here is still 100 km per hour, though it is soon going up to 130, and we've got around 9 km to go to the next stop, which is Mulheim. Now we're getting close to 100 km per hour, and just cutting the power back for a moment, just until we're able to accelerate further. Speed limit's now going up to 130 kilometers per hour, which is just over 80 miles an hour. And the speed limit's now going up further to 160 once again. One thing that I do wish that DTG would do is label the stations uh, on the map, on the route. Uh, so it's actually very difficult when you're going through a station to know where the hell you are. I look on the map and there's just nothing, no labels, nothing. Um, personally, I'd have thought that's quite basic, so I really do hope that it gets added um, to future iterations of Train Sim World in an update or something. Um, so I'm going to get the station names uh, from maps and then I'm going to try and match it all up and I'll put station names that we're passing through in captions in this video.
are reaching a section where the track split for a moment. We're actually going to be on a single track section here. Um, and on this single track section, I'm looking out now for a 130 km per hour speed warning, which is around 1.2 kilometers from the speed limit itself. And it's just on this signal post here, we've just reached that 130 warning. So I'm just gonna reduce the power down a bit now. just allowing the train to coast down to 130. Um, I believe the 130 speed limit, if I remember correctly, comes into force at the next signal. So the 130 limit is now in force. We've got 1.8 kilometers to go to a 100 limit and two kilometers to go to our stop. We're also on a downgrade of 1.2%, which is going to affect our acceleration. So I just need to use a bit of braking to control the speed here now. And I want to apply the brakes around kilometer post 120.8 should be coming up in a moment and I slowed down slightly more than I intended to there as well but not too much thankfully and we've just passed 120.8 so I've now got the brakes on for our stop and the upcoming 100 speed limit. speed limit has now dropped to 100 kilometers per hour and we should be seeing the platforms coming up at Mulheim in a moment. So here at Mulheim station, I'm looking for the first halt sign, so the first H sign on the track here, and that should be roughly the correct stopping point, and you can see that just coming up on the right-hand side now. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Mulheim, the speed limit is still 100 km per hour, though quickly going back up to 130 km per hour at the speed post that you can see in front of us now. And at this point we've got around 8 km to go, or just under 8 km to go should I say, to the next and final stop on this journey, which is Duisburg. Speed limit's now going up further to 140 kilometers per hour. Just before the station we just passed through, the speed limit went up to 150 kilometers per hour, though obviously that doesn't affect us.
power back and applied a little bit of braking as we went uh, uh, down under that bridge there, uh, just because there was a quite a steep downward gradient and it was just uh, causing us to accelerate a bit more than I wanted to. And now we've lost a bit too much speed, especially on the uphill gradient uh, coming away from that bridge. So what I'm looking out for along here now is actually a warning for an upcoming 100 km per hour speed limit. At that point I'll start braking um, for the speed limit itself. So we've got a warning there for an upcoming 140 speed limit. And that comes into force just before we cross uh, quite a large bridge. And that 140 warning was 2 kilometers from the 100 limit. Speed limit is now 140 kilometers per hour, and there's the large bridge that I mentioned a moment ago. I'm presuming we were crossing the River Rhine there or something like that. So we've now got a warning for the upcoming 100 limit, so I'm just going to apply some braking now uh, to start bringing our speed down. Just uh, reset the PZB there when I didn't need to. Um, it's actually at the next signal where I need to acknowledge a PZB warning. So now down to 100 kilometers per hour. As the speed limit drops to 100, we've got around 1.3 kilometers to go to Duisburg. And this is the signal that I needed to acknowledge. I don't know why I acknowledged the last one. That's actually warning us that the next signal is red. So I have 23 seconds to get below 85 kilometers per hour, which is easily doable when you're only doing around 100. And then I need to continue to slow down to ensure that uh, as we reach the 500 Hertz magnet, I'm not going above 65 kilometers per hour. Though I believe the 500 Hz magnet is actually in the platform. Uh, for anyone who's interested, of course I've mentioned it many times before, but you may well be new to my channel or something. I actually created a guide to German and Austrian signals in Train Simulator. And I'll post the link to that in the video description, um, just so that you can check that out. It'll teach you a lot more about how to drive accurately with the German signals. And whilst it was recorded in Train Simulator, the principles do still apply in Train Sim World. So we're now coming into Duisburg, and I need to stop at the H point, which is um, right, be right by the end of the platform roof. So we just passed the 500 hertz magnet. If we had been doing uh, 65 kilometers per hour, we'd have to slow down extremely quickly, down to 45 or below. I think it's within 153 meters if I remember correctly. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. And so here we are, arrival at Duisburg. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching this video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, for the latest channel updates, you can find me on Facebook with the link to my Facebook page in the video description. And if you'd like to support me on Patreon to help me get more DLC and produce more videos in the future, then please visit my Patreon page. Again, the link to that is in the video description. Once again, thank you for watching.